Berkeley CS classes are great. So far I've taken 10 CS classes, one EE class, and one math class. Here are my insights. First off, Berkeley CS classes are hard. Unless you're one of these guys, you will struggle. They are hard, but also very rewarding. In my experience, projects have been very interesting. CS61A. This is the intro class. Technically, there is another intro to this intro class called CS10, but most people start at 61A. This is where you learn the basics of Python and how to code. You are introduced to basic data structures like linked lists and dive deeper into things like lambda functions and higher order functions. The projects here are pretty whatever, pretty messed up. Um, overall, I give it a 6 out of 10. CS61B. Here, you learn data structures in Java. You learn things like hashing, heaps, trees, runtime, graphs, and more. You dive pretty deep into these topics, and it's overall very foundational CS class here at Berkeley. Most kids have a pretty solid foundation in these data structures before moving on to an upper division uh, comp sci class. Projects here are also a little bit bigger, and the final, projects, uh, the final project involves creating a game using graphs in the back end. Absolutely love this class, 9 out of 10. CS61C, here you dive low level, so no more Python, no more Java. You start to le learn code in C in the first two weeks, and then go into assembly coding using something called RISC-V. You learn CPU pipelining, very basic concurrency, virtual memory, and more. You learn to read bits and hexadecimal and debug programs by looking directly at memory. The projects here are significantly harder than before. Project 3 involves building your own virtual CPU from scratch. Very nice class, 8 out of 10. CS70. This is actually a math class disguised as a CS class. The first half on discrete maths cover proofs, graphs, modular arithmetic, counting, and more. The second half on probability introduces combinatorics, random variables, expected value, variance, and more. No projects here, just math problem sets. I'm not a huge math guy, but it was overall okay. 7 out of 10. Now we dive into the upper division courses, which can only be taken after taking the previous lower div classes. The upper div CS courses at Berkeley are generally much harder and more time consuming than the lower division courses. We start with CS 161. No lie, I hated this class. It's divided in three main parts, C memory vulnerabilities, cryptography, and web slash internet vulnerabilities. First part on C memory vulnerabilities, talking about buffer overflows was great and the project was very fun. We got to hack into this into a fictitious vulnerable system. But the rest of the class seemed pretty random. There was no guided direction and it seemed like a whole jambalaya of information. We also randomly decided to use Golang for the second project and some people really liked it, but personally I didn't. So 4 out of 10. CS162. Overall very fun and also very difficult. Projects are straight massive, so get ready for late nights. Projects are done in groups of four and often take at least 50 hours and often much more. One of the hardest and most time consuming project based undergraduate level CS classes here at Berkeley and also considered one of the core upper division classes that should be taken before graduating. You start off with learning things like user programs, threads, processes, the kernel, and you dive into virtual memory again, paging, scheduling, and the whole OS abstraction layer. Over the course of three projects, you build an entire operating system called Pintos. You get to implement threads, a fast file system, argument passing, and so much more. And the entire class is in C, or optionally, you could use Rust as well. Many people have compared the homework assignments of uh, CS162 to be equivalent to the workload of the projects of CS61B. And there are six homework assignments spread throughout the semester along with projects. Basically, it's just a whole shit ton of coding. Uh, I like coding, so I really liked it, 9 out of 10. CS186, very well structured class and very clear topic. So the entire semester is just focused on peeling away at each layer of the data uh, database system, ranging from the highest abstraction, the DBMS, all the way down to the individual pages, the files, the indices, uh, and, and, and the disk. Uh, pretty great class overall, and one downside is I think the class would be pretty easy, but they actually make it very artificially difficult by forcing precise counting of IOs, which just means um, precise counting of the uh, input output to to the disk. And IOs are sort of like a measure of runtime because they often are the bottleneck uh, for speed of many programs. And so it's often very important to analyze IO count for a database operation. However, rather than having us calculate sort of like 
an approximate or an order of magnitude, we have to perfectly get the right number. And oftentimes this number would be some random shit like 1,482 and would be pretty finicky and hard to get right on the dot every time. Um, other than this counting IOs nonsense, the projects are pretty fun. Uh, they're in Java. And over the course of five or six projects, you get to make an entire DBMS um, uh, that you get to play with. So overall, 7 out of 10. Uh, and then there is CS189. Uh, this is another math class disguised as a CS class. The math in this class is pretty insane. So you really need a good foundation in linear algebra, multivariate calculus, and even probability. Uh, I low-key think my math is pretty shit, so I struggled a lot here, especially towards the end for convolutional neural networks. The homework assignments are a combination of math and coding in Python, and usually the coding parts of the homework involves creating a model and testing it uh, and submitting your model to Kaggle. Uh, the course content varies heavily from professor to professor, so some professors like to teach more math foundation for ML and some prefer to focus on uh, sort of like cool new ML papers and technologies like transformers um, uh, for their class content. Uh, the workload of, of this class is pretty high. Some would say arguably around the same as CS162. Most people say it's a little bit less than 162. Uh, but just be prepared to suffer in this class as well unless you are a math god. Um, like I said, not a huge fan of math. So not really big into uh, all of this like linear algebra and multivariate stuff. So six out of 10 for me. And then there's CS164. Uh, this is a pretty niche and small class, probably one of the smallest undergraduate level uh, CS classes out there uh, at Berkeley. So lectures are held in this pretty tiny room, not much course staff and support for this class either. Uh, th this course gives a very sort of graduate level vibe. There's not much instruction. You just figure stuff out on your own at this point. Most people taking this are upperclassmen anyways. But overall, pretty fun class with uh, very cool projects. Uh, over the course of, uh, of four projects, you build your own compiler for a language called ChocoPy, which is a statically typed variant of Python. And uh, for our semester, we use Java. Other semester students have used C++ or uh, a, functioning, uh, a functional programming language called OCaml. Overall, I give it an 8 out of 10. Uh, finally, we have CS170, which is debatably the most important CS undergrad class alongside CS61B. Uh, CS61B is a data structures yeah, CS61B is data structures and 170 is the algorithms counterpart. Uh, it dives pretty deep into topics like graph theory, dynamic programming, reductions, uh, runtime, recurrence relation, greedy algorithms, and many, many more algorithms. Um, it sort of covers uh, a whole bunch of, uh, yeah, just, just algorithm stuff. And then, so mastering 61B and 170 uh, would 100% make you super set for any technical leak code style interview. So yeah, really pay good attention to these two classes and, and you'll be pretty set for, for finding a job. Uh, overall, pretty fun class with very interesting uh, problem sets, very intellectually stimulating uh, questions that they sort of come up with. And I had a decent amount of uh, prior knowledge coming in and I still learned a lot of new things. Uh, overall, great experience. I would give it a solid 9 out of 10. Uh, and that's it from me. Thanks for watching.